flying saucers fly. When I was young, I vividly remember being out in my backyard, staring up at the sky, and I kept thinking to myself, why doesn't somebody just build a saucer aircraft and put a propeller on it? At first, though, Jack had to understand their aerodynamic flaws. I came to realize there's just really just two basic designs that have ever been built, solid disc and ring wings. The solid disc is the design we've all seen in picture books. A classic saucer-shaped aircraft design is an ideal shape to fly around in with regards to payload and you can go at extremely high speeds. The problem is you have to take off and land and the solid discs are extremely unstable. And ring wings, saucers with holes in the middle, are also problematic. Unfortunately, there's no place to put a cockpit, put payload, and that's the whole idea of aircraft. Jack's now convinced he's solved these problems. He's come up with a design he calls Geobat. Geo because of its geometric symmetry, and bat because of the bats which flew near his childhood home. This is Geobat. I came up with the concept of splitting the wing into three different wing shapes. Forward wing, a rear wing, and connecting wingtips. It's effectively a ring wing design with a smaller hole producing a larger stabilizing front wing and room for payload. But most importantly, Geobat flies. Thanks to its unique forward and rear hinged wing flaps, which can work independently from each other, the Geobat is extremely maneuverable. So it's just a matter of time until the industry slowly starts to recognize the advantages of this aircraft design. But does anyone else buy into the Geobat vision? Jack's come to the University of Auburn to meet an aeronautical engineer who's acted as a consultant to NASA. His name's John Cochran, and he's going to put Geobat through its first independent assessment in a 200 kilometer per hour wind tunnel. Jack, well, let's just get started with a test. We're going to measure the lift and drag on your model and, uh, and see how those compare with uh, other kinds of configurations. In a wind tunnel, air is forced over the model at different speeds and angles to simulate real flight. The readings are then scaled up to match a full-size aircraft. After years of developing Geobat, it's crunch time for Jack. The graphs that you see uh, on the screen is, is the kind of thing we would like to see. is has a, a slope which goes down and to the right, which means you have a, a stable configuration. It's got several different uh, aerodynamic surfaces rather than just two as a uh, conventional aircraft would have. In fact, Geobat's wing design could reduce wingtip vortices the spirals of air which sometimes reduce lift. The vortices are distributed rather than concentrated like on most aircraft. You may have very good benefits as far as efficiency and, uh, and maneuverability. But John's most impressed by the structural strength that Geobat's aerodynamics make possible. Conventional aircraft have an inherent weakness in that only the wings provide the lift. The fuselage carrying the payload is dead weight producing downward pressure. The fuselage uh, serves a purpose, but it does not, in most aircraft designs, produce any uh, lift. Now, the saucer aircraft is a lifting body. That means it, it floats in the air like a boat. It would appear we have a new type of aircraft that can compete with traditional aircraft. I'm happy. <laughs> So could this aviation vision and childhood dream one day fill our skies? Geobat is far out science fiction, but how many times have you seen science fiction and then later in life say, look, I, I saw that in a movie. Flying saucers are coming, believe it.